Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Art and Design and Photography Open Evening online presentation. Um, I'll just introduce uh, who's going to be on the session this evening. That's myself, Jonathan Sansom. I teach Art and Design here at Hills Road. We're also joined by Toby Savile, who also teaches Art and Design. Uh, Tuli Parker, who's in charge of photography. Uh, we've got Anouk and Claudia, who are two of our students, and they're going to be telling you a little bit about the student experience uh, as the session um, uh, unravels, uh, that's probably the wrong word, develops, shall we say, as we go forward. So um, we're going to be talking to you this evening about two different A-levels that we deliver in the department. One is art and design, and the other one is photography. Um, they share quite a lot of common ground, but also some really distinct differences. And we're gonna be uh, explaining a little bit of how that is so uh, this evening. Um, we're going to uh, kick off with our first little slide here uh, with some imagery that's just selected from both courses. Uh, and you can see on this example slide, some figurative painting, uh, some architectural sculpture, some organic sculpture, um, some architectural casting, and then some photography of the human body, close up, fashion photography, uh, and urban interior photography. Um, just the beginning to give you a little bit of a flavor of the kind of work uh, that our students do uh, on the course here. Uh, we're gonna start off with some uh, ideas about uh, what it's like to study in the department in terms of ways of working. And we've got a couple of slides just to take you through uh, some of that. So here you can see some imagery of students working uh, the, the first two images are, are downstairs in the workshop area, people working with uh, ceramics, uh, some large scale work, some construction work, uh, painting, uh, someone beating metal in our really lovely sculpture yard, which is a, a space that people can work on outside and really make a mess uh, if that's what they need to do. Um, and some more delicate construction work uh, with a, a mannequin and some mosaic beads and in the middle some graphic imagery and uh, we have got ec excellent digital resources so students can produce uh, digital material uh, as well. If I just skip on to the next one, one of the questions that students may have at this point um, is do I have to do everything uh, on this course and the answer to that is you don't have to do everything and in fact most of our students will come to us with an idea of the things that they really enjoy uh, and they will want to spend time developing those skills and building on the expertise that they've already invested a lot of time in, in terms of um, the GCSE experience. So um, painting and drawing and printmaking are very popular, um, but equally students may come to us with uh, a background in 3D making or graphics or textiles, and they're the things that they will want to develop. But of course, everybody in this course wants to try new things too uh, and we can give great opportunities uh, to do things that perhaps have not been possible in terms of time and scale at GCC. So this slide here you can see examples of architectural construction, uh, some larger scale as a full scale figure made from clay with some casting going on, textiles work, mixed media uh, and construction. So Quite a lot of variety uh, of work, um, perhaps on a bigger scale. And I guess that, that leads into a question about one of the key differences between GCS, GCSE and A-level uh, in art and design. Um, and that really is the level of time that students have got to invest in the subject means that their skills develop much, much more quickly at this stage. So you'll be doing four hours of lessons a week in the department. And you would also be doing five hours of independent work per week uh, on your course. And that's common to all A-levels. It's, you know, sometimes people say, oh, art takes up so much extra time. Well, it, it doesn't at A-level. Um, it takes up quite a lot of time, but so do all the other A-levels. So we're, we're very clear that that's a kind of a fair shares approach. And uh, it does mean that students develop and move ahead uh, really quickly. Just a very quick word about the atmosphere in the department. We are a very uh, warm and welcoming department. Um, we are, we're definitely very student-centered. We know that good art comes out of students believing in what they're doing, 
feeling comfortable and confident uh, as they develop their work. Um, and we do a lot of sharing of work and group work, uh, peer review, so that people are interested to see what other people are doing. Um, and that's a really important part of learning. And my last point before I hand over is this, the size of the department. We have about 170 students doing art and design A-level, about 60 doing photography, uh, and, and also history of art uh, is within the department too. And some of our students will be doing two or more of those subjects, depending on their um, focus and their ambition moving forward. Um, but of course, with that big scale of numbers of students means we've got a huge pool of ideas and ways in which people are enthusiastic uh, about their work. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand over to Toby uh, to take you forward um, with some reflections uh, on the students' work. Thank you, Jonathan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Jonathan introduced us all. My name is Toby Saville. I'm very fortunate enough to teach quite a lot of the A-level art course, some photography, and I'm also very much involved in the teaching of the life drawing enrichment course that we run for our art students. So my job is just to uh, delve just a little bit deeper into the A-level art course uh, to refer to perhaps some of the uh, processes and techniques that students uh, love to explore. Uh, and also to paint uh, a picture of the overall structure of the course, how that you know, pans out from uh, year 12 into year 13. So uh, a couple of slides illustrate that students produce work every single year that is highly skilled, uh, innovative, thought provoking, uh, addressing complex issues, celebrating visual interests as well. And it's also important probably to note this evening that students arrive at the beginning of the A-level of course uh, with a very broad range of interests and experiences prior to starting. For example, if you're a 3D maker or you've got very strong interests in digital media, if you're a painter, printmaker, for example, um, our course will fully support you in those interests. A, a key strength uh, that we feel the department has is the time put into working with the individual students to nurture exciting, exploratory and personal responses to the world around them. We, we absolutely do not have a, a house style or a preference for the way we want students to work. And I, I hope the slides uh, that I'm sharing with you will show you just what a diverse range of processes um, go on in our classes each and every year. So we think of the two-year process as, uh, as a journey, uh, and that journey starts um, in year 12 um, with the excitement and adrenaline running that is always there for the excitement of the beginning of an A-level course. And um, the, the first 10 week block of year 12 um, is a sequence of carefully planned and structured introductory workshops. The main purpose of those workshops is to really build strong creative skills, plenty of drawing included in that, but also to really engender a, a, an excitement and taste for um, risk taking, uh, exploring materials and processes um, to widen one's kind of visual vocabulary and opportunities for expressing personal ideas as the course develops. After the block of introductory workshops I've referred to, students will then go on to do a shorter personal project, uh, and that's their first taste of developing something where they've got greater responsibility for the direction of that project. And that's when, as teachers, we really sit down and work with them as individuals uh, developing projects based on interesting themes. After the personal project, uh, students will then uh, go on uh, and they're very much ready to start unit one. So typically this will start in February of year 12. Unit one is worth 60% of the A-level course. Uh, and it's a, a long uh, thorough project which we divide into three distinct phases that are carefully structured to allow students to develop um, really uh, personal responses uh, to themes that they have negotiated and discussed with their teacher. Uh, the work produced, as you can see from the slides, um, is diverse, exciting, 
uh, and skillful. So unit one really nurtures the maturity and the progression and development of those techniques and skills. So in the slides, we can see digital work. Um, we can see drawing, photography, uh, meshed in with drawing in a mixed media concept, abstraction, figurative painting. Uh, and this afternoon in my class, there were students working, uh, working with mannequins, looking at body sculpture, ceramics, uh, heat guns, carving, uh, and lots of painting too. Painting is a very much a very popular pathway for our students. All practical projects are supported by really thorough research uh, into uh, well-known practitioners from contemporary, modern, and earlier art movements. Um, and we find that students benefit hugely from the research they do into those artists. Building up uh, skills in uh, analysis and research are ones that we uh, support and guide on. Uh, and those skills uh, come into fruition when students in their second year are ready to write a two to 3,000 word uh, written assignment. And that is purely to discuss uh, in more depth artists, designers, architects that are directly relevant to their own practical unit of coursework. Uh, unit two commences deep into the second year, uh, is a shorter unit of work worth 40% of the course, and this is resolved with a 15 hour uh, controlled exam piece done over three days. So uh, a, a picture there of just how the art course will accommodate so many wide interests, uh, will nurture uh, new interests uh, and build you know, a really exciting experience for our students. So um, from me to pass you upstairs to Thule, who's going to guide you through uh, the A-level photography course. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm Thule, I'm the head of photography here. And uh, I'm just gonna talk to you about, I mean, Jonathan and Toby have talked a lot about the art course and the similarities between art and photography. And the majority of the things that have been talked about are the same, but there are obviously some differences. So I'm going to talk to you about those. So uh, my background is that I'm, I study graphic design, I specialise in photography. I worked commercially as a photographer for a number of years before realising I was actually a fine art photographer. Um, and that's where I am now. That's what I like to do. So um, that puts me in a good position to be able to help a number of sort of different themed projects that the students want to work on. And Jonathan, Toby, um, provide support for the students as well. So this year they're supporting the year two students with their projects. So in terms of ways of working, um, as you can see, I'm in the classroom at the moment. So we have a full computer suite. Uh, every student has their own computer. They have access to the Adobe Creative Cloud at college and at home. We've also got the studio and the dark room on this floor. Um, and we've got uh, equipment that students can borrow as well. So we've got cameras and lenses, flash guns and tripods all kinds of bits and pieces that, that students can borrow to work with on their projects. And in terms of um, how they work, uh, as you can see in the images here, we've got a nice examples of students working in the, in the studio, um, learning how to work with film, processing film, printing in the dark room, doing some group work, uh, helping each other with their projects, with some peer review and support, um, some location shoots. So um, after half term, we're heading to the Botanic Garden to learn about aperture and shutter speed. Um, so on location is really, really important, uh, as well as being in the classroom. Um, as we said, um, you know, we are really, we like to see ourselves as a very friendly and supportive uh, department. Um, and I often refer to the photography department as the creative hub, um, that actually everybody in the room brings something to that creative hub and they can help and support each other with projects, as well as getting support from teachers. So thinking about the questions I would normally get um, at open evening. Um, and I think there's been some questions coming up, which I'll, I'll answer some of them. So if you don't have an art background, you can still study photography. Um, so we just look for a grade six in, um, in English, language or literature. But if you do have uh, photography or art as a background, then it's the equivalent, it's grade six again. Um, so the differences, the main differences between art and photography are uh, one of the main differences is the outcomes. So when students are working on a photography course, the outcomes that they're working on will be things like uh, exhibition and exhibition books. So exhibition prints presented in a book format. It may be a photo book with or without text. 
it may be a magazine um, with, with quite a sort of serious relationship between the text and the image. It may be moving image. So some students they may do work on a documentary or they might work on a, a series of um, shorter moving images uh, or they might do a combination of things. So I've got students at the moment that have, have created photo books and are now quite keen to start working on um, a moving image to, to, to sit alongside um, the photo book that they've created. Uh, another question that we get asked um, is, uh, and this is a very popular one, can I do what I want? That's a very popular question that I've heard over the years. Um, and the short answer is yes, absolutely you can. So the lower six students at the moment are working on projects uh, with themes starting with storyteller, identity and journey. And one of the main differences in the autumn term between art and photography is that the photography students actually start their project uh, in the summer. So it's the summer work that we ask them to do. And then they develop that into a project. Um, and underpinned, um, that project does it underpinned uh, from the very beginning with practical location work, uh, project management, how to design their PowerPoint presentations, how to design their outcomes, uh, looking at visual studies lessons, so looking at all of the technical things that need to learn. So there was one, a question there about whether you needed to have any uh, experience in terms of photography. And nothing is assumed. We don't assume that you know anything about photography to the point where you may not even know how to open the back of a film camera. So all of that is taught in the autumn term. Um, and then supporting that as well, we have um, lessons looking at visual studies. So we'll look at aperture and shutter speed and lighting and composition and introduce you to lots of um, new and exciting photographers that you might not come across unless we show them to you. And then that's all supported by working um, with post-production techniques in our digital sessions. But a really key thing um, on the course is enjoyment. Enjoyment is a really key word. Enjoyment of new experiences, building on skills you enjoy and working on projects that you feel really inspired by as you will in obviously enjoy them more and if you're not enjoying them then that's where we need to have a conversation because um, you know if you're not enjoying something it's hard to keep so I'm just going to show you some examples of some students work so um, Gabby was uh, an art and photography student here um, last year and she was really interested in, in sort of combining the two um, the loves together so she produced um, a series of exhibition prints exploring graphic art posters inspired by, you know, inspired by architecture. Um, Beth, the image on the left, uh, was really interested in uh, this idea of sort of things, you know, sort of dreams and nightmares and things that we see in the dark. So I really enjoyed exploring, creating these surreal images where you're not quite, you know, you don't quite notice uh, at first that they're actually feet uh, of the chair. So it's quite an interesting project to work on. Um, and Alice really enjoyed working with chemical photography, so she worked with our medium format camera um, and she processed and printed her images, um, producing a series of black and white portraits, exploring the idea of the still point in a turning world. Eve really enjoyed working in the studio, and what you, you'll find if you study the photography course is that you will, you will end up being a model, it's just a given. Um, so this is one of her classmates uh, posing for her, and she was exploring the idea of the body in motion. So as I said, Gabby was a, an, an art and photography student here, so she really enjoyed combining uh, some mixed media techniques. And Emma was also an art student, and she was looking at a project called In Water. So just some abstract uh, observations of how objects behave in water um, and produced a really interesting body of work. Hopefully you can see from that that we cover lots of different uh, mediums and materials. And another question we often get is, do I, have to, do I have to do everything? Do I have to do chemical photography? Do I have to do digital? Do I have to do the image? You get introduced to everything and then you decide what's appropriate to your project. And that's a really clear point in terms of the assessment objectives. So the big emphasis is, is on us supporting exploratory, exploratory personal responses to the world around you and doing that using thorough research into inspiration, contemporary, modern, traditional ideas and techniques. So it's a really exciting first term um, with a really, really big emphasis on, on building your skills up so that you're ready for the unit one project that you start in this spring. I'm gonna hand you back to Toby now, who's gonna to talk to you about creative futures.
Thanks, Tuli. Um, and absolutely. So before I hand you over to two of our students uh, who are joining us this evening, just uh, an opportunity. We wanted this slide to paint a really super clear picture about the wealth uh, of career opportunities that students studying A-level art and A-level photography have before them. Um, the UK, as the slide uh, illustrates, I hope really clearly, uh, really, really does lead in some very exciting areas. Each year, absolutely, many of our students will choose to progress uh, with their interests in art and design photography. Uh, many do choose to move on to the single year art foundation course, uh, and some uh, choose to apply directly to undergraduate degree courses uh, in areas such as architecture, photography, uh, and others. I guess whilst that is the case, we would want to stress quite clearly that within a class of um, uh, students that have that aspiration to develop a career in creative areas, uh, they will be amongst students that will have very strong interests in the sciences, humanities, for example, and other you know, visual art, uh, creative arts, such as drama, dance, and performance. Um, the thing to remember, perhaps, or to remind ourselves that art really, really does complement all subjects within the, uh, within the college, uh, and students will find that the skill sets that they develop in art uh, really, really will support uh, things. So with uh, art and photography in mind, one's building skill sets in observation, perception, uh, analysis, uh, creative problem solving. Um, they develop very, very strong collaborative working skills. Um, uh, and also, crucially, uh, they do build the confidence to make strong, to express strong personal and meaningful ideas about the world around them and to communicate that uh, in clear, unique and personal ways. As part of getting to know our students really, really well within class one-to-one -one conversations, uh, we are actively you know, in dialogue with them uh, deeper into the first year and certainly now uh, with the second years about their kind of progression thoughts and ideas and so supporting students to prepare applications, uh, prepare interview portfolios is very much a dialogue that you know, I'm in with my second years uh, right now. With this in mind, um, we've set up uh, an online team uh, called Creative Futures. All of our students, both first and second years, are members of that team. And it's a place to go uh, to access resources that staff are placing on there relating to about six different art, art design, and photography pathways. Uh, students are sharing their own research from open day visits uh, uh, as well. So it becomes a very strong, rich, shared dialogue and out of that dialogue, um, we have actually set up uh, a workshop for after half term um, requested by the students to do uh, a, a workshop and meeting based on interview portfolio preparation. Uh, and we're going to support both A-level photography and art students uh, now that that's becoming quite present in their minds. So um, mm. it's become a really, really healthy part or extension and supportive element uh, of what we're doing here in the art department to help them move onwards and upwards. So I hope that helps a little bit. There's a long old list there on the slide of you know academic areas with art, um, highly creative practices within photography, commercial practices with photography and design as well. So um, we're excited about that because we know uh, just how much success students can have uh, moving uh, onwards and upwards from A level. So. What I'll do now is um, I'll give you an opportunity to hear from our two students here this evening. Firstly, Anouk, who'll talk about A-level art. We'll introduce Claudia, who's going to talk to you about A-level photography. Hi, I'm Anouk, and I study art, history, and psychology at Hills. And I've seen quite a lot of questions about graphic design um, tonight, so which is nice because I'm going into graphic design after art A-level. And I originally wasn't planning on going to Hills because I took design and technology GCSE. So I didn't take art at GCSE, but I visited the open evening a couple years ago and I immediately fell in love when I flipped through the student sketchbooks. Hills was sort of a plan B in my mind at the time, but 
just seeing the freedom of creative expression that is present throughout Hills, not just the art department in our independence and you know our casuals and clothing. It's especially important in the art and design department. You can do whatever you want, however you want to with the facilities, which are amazing. There's plaster casting, ceramics, spot welding, basically any idea that you have, you can basically realize, which is really nice. Um, even with me who was pretty set on sticking to digital graphic design, typography, that kind of work, um, I was managed to be convinced to sort of branch out into more um, artistic processes such as projection and light and color and I just found that the support that you get when you have a, an idea for your project is amazing. Um, it's not like what I've heard about art GCSC where there are specific styles that you might have to follow or you might have found that some of your teachers have encouraged realism or the human form but you'll find that here the teachers will encourage you wherever you want to go. Like uh, Jonathan is an abstract artist, so I don't think he would ever encourage you to just stick to realism. But that being said, real, there's nothing wrong with realism. There's nothing wrong with pencil. There's nothing wrong with pen. It's You do whatever you want to do, but you, you're allowed to do it in a unique and different project, a different way. Yeah, the 10 week induction for someone who hadn't done art GCSE and who didn't really know um, much about the art process beyond just doing it as a hobby, I found that the 10 week induction was a really good foundation if you haven't done art at GCSE. Because at GCSE, you, you may not have enjoyed it. I heard from a lot of people just because of the control, but you at least learn how to go through a project. So if you didn't take art at GCSE, don't worry. I would highly recommend still taking art at A-level just because it's so worth it. I've really enjoyed my time in the art and design department, which is probably why I'm speaking right now. But um, And I've really enjoyed meeting with the faculty and making new friends within the, part, the department. So now I'll just pass on to Claudia to talk about photography. Hi, I'm Claudia and I take photography with history of art and English literature and I've seen just from the Q&A there's a lot of questions about all oh, like kind of what combination should you do. I think that's a great combination but I know loads of people that take science and maths and geography with it and they've had no issue with university and stuff. I just thought that some people were worried about that. I think it kind of goes with everything. It's quite a nice people that take more sort of like academic subjects say it's a really lovely contrast and for me I want to do photography at university so that's kind of my main priority so I took my other two A levels to kind of support that but it kind of works the other way around too so I just saw that so I just kind of wanted to talk about that quickly before I went on to why I like doing it at Hills. Um, Hills is really great like Anouk said the facilities are just amazing and I think having been to other open days I didn't get the same vibe of it just being a really nice, creative, relaxed space that you could kind of do whatever you wanted and everyone was really supportive of any choices that you made within that. In photography, I spent a lot of time in the dark room. I really love the dark room, but the studio is really great too. And you're kind of, you can go in there kind of when you want or you could when the virus wasn't a thing, but hopefully by the time you get there, it will all be fine. You can kind of just, I like spending all my free time in there just because it's extra time to just spend doing what I love and I think it's really great that it's just such an open environment to do what you want and along with that because I want to go on to do it at university it's really great the amount of support you get if that is your dream to do something like that often I find that people kind of tell you that you shouldn't do stuff like that but you never get that impression from the art department at Hills it's like you'd want to do what you want to do and you'll get as much support as you need with that doing art subjects at Hills it's also you meet the loveliest people who are very like-minded and everyone just wants to know what everyone else is doing and you're constantly talking about your project and everyone else's and you're bouncing off each other and like you make really amazing friends that way that just really help you with what you're doing and I've just really enjoyed doing it and clearly I've enjoyed it enough to want to do it next year too so I really recommend coming here and doing both art not that I do art but I know I've heard amazing things about art too but art and photography. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Anouk. So it's so lovely to, to get uh, viewpoints from the students as well. I will come back to this question about how universities view photography, but I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, the study visits that we have in place and the enrichments that we offer on the, um, at Hills Road as well. So um, we do try and make sure that our students get out to see um, inspiring, exciting things and have some first-hand encounters 
So as I said, um, I'm taking the photography students to the Botanic Garden um, after half term to learn about camera techniques, aperture and shutter speed, and also lighting, um, because there's nothing like actually being on location with your teacher and being able to ask questions and what buttons do I press and what settings do I use? Um, you know, it's just really valuable time. Um, but we also um, run a, a yearly trip to Tate Modern. We haven't been able to do that this year, obviously, um, but we do that as a whole art department. So all the art students and the photography students go to that. Um, so it's an experience to see some kind of first, first hand encounters with world leading examples of art and also just going to interesting places as well. So as well as, as going to take modern this opportunity to explore around the area. So again, the photography students um, spend part of that day going down to the embankment and taking photographs there. We've also run a number of really successful trips to places like Venice and Paris and Berlin. Um, so some really exciting things happen on the, on the, in the art department. Um, and just the last bit about the, the trips is that um, we're very lucky to be so close to Cambridge Botanic Garden and they offer our photography, art, uh, geography and biology students a free annual pass um, so that you can go and make use of um, the garden. So it's really fantastic that they offer that. So enrichment, as an art department, uh, we do offer a lot of enrichment um, and it's really a lot of it is really to do with kind of art therapy and an opportunity to just do something different to your other subjects um, and to just do something that just sort of takes your mind off things as well. So quite often I'll get students saying, oh, I didn't think about my work at all while I was doing that. It's so nice to have a break from that. So I think it's just really important um, to have that as an opportunity. So we run um, ceramics, we run creative structures, which is a combination of ceramics and glasswork. We run Toby runs the life drawing sessions for the for the, the year two students and um, we've got creative drawing we've got illustration and art therapy we've got chemical photography we've got digital photography and you can see in one of the pictures there um, Sandy Kane who's from the Cambridge Botanic Garden working with our, our students to design uh, this year we designed uh, a fairy garden for the children that come to the um, to the uh, school garden at the Botanic Gardens, there's opportunity to do lots of creative things. Okay, thank you very much, Sheely. Yeah, so just um, a word from me um, about a really exciting opportunity to find out a lot more about the art and design department, particularly the art and design photography A-levels. Um, we have for a number of years uh, run a really uh, exciting website called hillsart.net. Um, and this year it's had a massive makeover um, really to kind of uh, foreground some beautiful work that was produced by our year 13 leavers. So it's first of all become a site for our, what we call our 2020 vision show, uh, which has got some a really extensive gallery of, uh, of amazing work. But if you look at it, you'll see how that uh, backs up a lot of the things we've been saying about variety, about quality, about a sense of ambition, uh, and creative uh, invention in the work. So it's, it just kind of screams out of the website and it's great on mobile as well, if you want to have a look there. Um, we've also uh, presented some great digital work there um, so that there's uh, examples of moving image uh, and graphic design work as well. Um, Anouk and Claudia have given you a little bit of a taste of the student experience and we've built on that on the website too we have a section called Our People, um, where we have art and photography students, both um, ones who have left and are looking back on their experience and also who are current students, talking about what it's like to study here. So um, that's a really important part of you know, your own investigation in terms of weighing up what we're like as a department. You know, you'll really get a sense of that, listening to those students there. And then lastly, we've got a, a section called Welcome to Hills, which we've produced especially for our prospective students. Um, and we've got uh, examples of project work in there. So you can have a look through the sketchbooks, which are a really, really important part of uh, the day-to-day -day work of an art student. Um, and also you can look through uh, some great photography projects and really get a sense of how these, this course is about developing um, not just the ability to make beautiful work, but to handle and own a project, to, to develop it, to take responsibility and to be creative and inventive in that project. And you'll 
you get a real sense of that over and beyond some of the things that we've been able to say today in what is quite a, a brief presentation, really. So uh, hillsart.net, that's what you need to remember. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to look it up uh, straight after uh, this presentation. Um, I'm going to zoom through the next slides because I want, we want to spend time on the questions and answers. But So just a word or two about performance in the art department. We've had some great results uh, over the years, very strong progression that Toby was talking about uh, on to different courses. And, you know, really important to realise that students from here in the art and the photography courses go on to do all sorts of things. Um, and, um, you know, not just the creative subjects, but any subject really uh, that students do. There's so many studying here, the variety is huge. So we're going to round up now. We've got a few minutes left uh, and we're going to just knock off some of those questions that are left. I've been trying to tap away and answer the easy ones, uh, but we've got some more uh, substantial ones there. I know, Tuli, you wanted to come back on the, the photography one. Do you want to start with that? Yes, this is um, this is quite a common sort of question that comes up. I think what we've found is that um, university courses that are heavily uh, exam based um, are not keen on photography because it's a it's a predominantly coursework based subject. You know, for your unit one um, project, it's coursework based, and for your externally set task, it's pretty much coursework based uh, with an exam, a practical fifteen hour exam at the end. Um, and for some universities, that doesn't show them how students can perform under exam conditions. It doesn't, it doesn't um, have the same test of memory and being able to uh, answer questions in, under time conditions. So I think um, that's the main thing that comes up. So if you're thinking about whether um, if you're thinking about whether you're not quite sure what you want to study beyond um, A level, or you're not quite sure how photography might fit with that. Um, you just need to think what kind of degree course are you, might you consider. And if you were going to consider something that was um, very exam based, then would photography, would photography fit with that? It, you know, for me, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm quite biased. Um, you know, you learn a lot on the photography course about how to project manage, how to work with other people, how, how to um, deal with situations, how to mix with other people. There's lots of really good qualities in terms of making decisions, con controlling your project. But in terms of an exam, you're probably not going to learn exam skills that you need. I don't know whether, Toby, you want to add anything, or Jonathan, you want to add anything to that? I, I would just add very quickly to that, that the Russell Group, uh, probably about 15 years ago, published a notorious list of uh, subjects that you should only do one of, um, and it was really just sort of saying, well, you know, if you want to come and study, um, you know, a subject like uh, English or history, you probably shouldn't do loads of pra practical subjects. But uh, they've over the last couple of years, they've reissued their advice and they've actually said quite openly, creative subjects are great. They should be part of a mix. And they've been really, really clear and they've kind of backtracked a bit because I think they were giving a really unhelpful message. Um, and to have art or photography alongside other things is great. And, um, you know, it's certainly we see students going on to Russell Group and Oxbridge from our photography and art courses every year. So, you know, you know pick the subjects that you enjoy and that you're going to do really well at in a mix and, you know, think carefully about those choices. There's a, there's a couple of questions from uh, Skylar and, and Louise, so I'm really happy to have a little go at those questions. Um, both are kind of interlinked. Um, Skylar's asks uh, about whether all art styles are accepted on the A-level art course. Um, I know I'm quite small in your screens, but the answer's kind of hopefully behind me. Um, we've got some kind of abstract construction, relief construction work based on urban structures. And here we have a relatively traditional uh, portrait made in oil on canvas. Um, style in art arrives out of, you know, observing and considering one's subject, but it also derives out of, you know, deep research and learning from artists' work. So uh, I know Anouk will, you know, confirm that in her class, there's, there's not a project that's the same. Um, so I hope, Skylar, that helps um, perhaps um, clarify for you that we, we do not have a house style 
we encourage you to find a style that's the most effective way of presenting the ideas that you have, be it digital, three-dimensional, uh, textile, uh, or you know, particularly popular is, is painting. Uh, and Louise's question was about textiles and I was working with Poppy and Natalie in my group this afternoon, both working at mannequins uh, with you know, reasonably complex textile processes that are quite sculptural kind of body garments, body sculpture. Uh, and they've got very strong interests in pursuing you know, uh, a career in that area too. So uh, textile inductions are very much available with our sewing machines and our, our textiles um, studio area. Um, there were a couple questions about the essay writing. So the personal study. Um, I think for me who takes history and psychology, the essay writing is not bad at all. Um, especially if you're writing about art, it's a lot easier to write about art than maybe other humanities. And if you have, if you don't take uh, any essay writing subjects, then it's also fine. Your teachers will support you throughout the entire thing. They have a million resources. One might say too many resources to go through for the personal study. And I think it's worth 20%. Is it worth 15% or 20%? It's 12 this year. <laughs> okay, 12 well even better <laughs> yeah but it's a 2,000 to 3,000 word essay um just interweaving different artists movements your own work and I personally personally find it quite fun to write because you get to research a bunch of stuff that has to do with your project anyways so um it's really not that bad so I'm really aware that we're we're fast losing time with this um there were some questions about photography and equipment what i would say is um if you if you have any questions about equipment uh, do send us an email and we'll get back to you with um uh, an answer that might be specific to your requirements that's probably the yeah. best to do it i'm i'm very aware of time now and I, I think that there's quite a lot of questions that we haven't answered can i encourage people if you email them to admissions we will answer them by email and um, the last thing really I want to say is thank you so much for everybody who's come along to the session. Uh, it's great um, to know that you're all out there uh, in, the, in the digital ether. Um, and to say a huge thank you to Claudia and Anouk for supporting us as students this evening, which is, uh, uh, is really great and hugely appreciated. So we hope to see you um, in art and design or photography um, real soon. Um, and you know, check out hillsart.net because that will give you a, a really good sense of the quality and the creativity of the department. So um, thank you very much and good evening to everybody.